Now that you've got your business name and you're ready to go, the next thing to do is to create the artwork for it. It's fine that you have your business name, but you now need to be able to turn it into an electronic file. What you need to do in this case is two things. You need to be able to send it off to a graphic designer and you then have to give him a brief and you have to explain to him what your business is, what colors you want to use within the, the business name. And he will then fill in the blanks and create the electronic file for you. Now, if you're using a logo, you can't just grab something off the net because it's going to either be copywritten or it's not going to be the right file format or it'll be too small. The last thing you want to do is create a business name and then you use a logo off the net and then find that further down the track, it's not going to work for you. The printer can't use that logo. Now, the other thing is too, that you don't have to have a logo. And the reason being is because if you put your logo out there after you've been trading for 12 months or so, no one really is going to know what, what it is or what it stands for. Unless you're Nike or Maccas where you have huge budgets where you can advertise across all social media and television. They have the budget. So if you put an M out there for Maccas, people, pretty well everyone will know what that stands for. Takeaway. And if you have the Nike swoosh logo, pretty well everyone's going to know that that belongs to Nike. So having a logo is not critical. You can just go with a business name if you want to. You can create a logo further down the track if you decide to go down that way, that path. But the, the graphic designer will come up with a font that suits that business name. For instance, my one at the back here, Treasury Road, I bought that font and then I then created the artwork for it. So your graphic designer will do the same thing, but you need to also have the idea of colors that you want that's going to reflect your business as well. Now, if you're going to do it yourself, you need to have some graphic experience in using either Illustrator or Photoshop or InDesign or some other vector-based programs. Now, if you're not familiar with what I'm just talking about then, my suggestion would be to take your file to a graphic designer. And there are graphic designers on the web anyway, and they're, you know, prices have come down greatly. So you might be able to get your, your business name in the colors you want, in the file format you want for probably 50 or hundred dollars. Sometimes in some cases less, but there are different graphic designers. So when it comes to your logo, that's going to cost you more. So a little bit of research, can take it out of your hands, put it into a graphic designer's hands, and you get back the files in the correct file format. When it comes to files, and we're getting a little techo here, but, but nothing huge. When it comes to files, we'll work on two files. For instance, a JPEG, and a vector. Now a vector file is a file that keeps the pathways. For instance, again, we'll work with, we'll work with the logo Treasury Road, the business name Treasury Road. Around, these, around the text here, in the file is all live. Now what that means is that we can blow that up to the size of a billboard and the text will remain nice and crisp. You can have it as small as possible and it will remain nice and crisp. That is called a vector file. Now, when it comes to a JPEG, which is usually pictures that you see on the web or in a photograph, a JPEG is an image that is flattened, which means that it can only be enlarged so big before it pixelates. So imagine a balloon and it's got an image printed on it. When you blow up, it, when the balloon's small, it's nice, looks quite nice. But when you blow it up, it starts to pixelate and lose its image quality. That is what happens with a JPEG or a TIFF or a bitmap. So if you're doing your business name and it's just all text, 
you want it as a vector file which your graphic designer will know that if you are going to incorporate a photograph into the business name then although your text will generally be able to blown up as big as anything your image that you use cannot be blown up big unless it is a huge file if you're having a text with a bitmap image for instance you could have jewelry in it or whatever the case may be in with your as a backdrop to your business name then that can only be blown up to a certain size and if you want it to be blown up bigger it has to be created a lot bigger the graphic designer can explain that to you but that's going to be the basics if you're just looking at a business name without any other background images then that will be a vector file and that can be blown up as big as anything when that vector file has been created by the graphic designer that can actually be emailed to you and you can still blow it up as big as a billboard because in the file itself it has live pathways and on a bitmap you can only blow it up a certain size or a jpeg you can only blow it up a certain size so just keep that in mind you need to know some basics if you're going to create this yourself a lot of the problems i see out there in the marketplace by people that are doing it themselves is they'll come up with a name they'll type it out in a program like word or or publisher or some other desktop application they grab a file from the internet they put it into word and they go well that's it i've created my logo but in actual fact it really isn't going to be used that well because the printer is not going to be able to use it it's 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 fine probably for a business card but like I said earlier you need to forward think so that as your business grows you are able to then produce point of sale knowing that your logo and your business name and that's if you're using a logo that your business name the printer is going to be able to use so keep that in mind that's very important my suggestion is Get a graphic designer to do it right the first time unless you have uh, some skills with a vector program or a bitmap program and there, there are simple programs out there to use that you might want to play around with that's fine have a go um, but just be aware that you need to do it correctly to make sure that you can use it further down the track I hope the last segment wasn't too techo for you and I hope you took something away from it. And if you did, kudos to you. Now on this one, we're talking about color and this also has a little bit of techo in it as well, but not, but not too bad. Now, when we're talking about color, there's different printers in the marketplace. And just to run by a few of them, I won't go into too much detail because you can Google it if you need to know, but, but in saying that, when the time comes to get your point of sale printed, it's great if you have some idea on how or on the process of printing them so that you can go to the best printer to get the best price for your point of sale. So there are things like flags and there are things like indoor fabric banners. They can be done by dye sublimation, which means that they print onto paper with a water-based ink they transfer it with a big heat press onto fabric. The ink explodes in the fabric and becomes one with the fabric. And then it comes out like the flags at the back of me here. And also an indoor banner is created that same way. So they become outdoor durable. Now bear in mind, everything outdoor fades eventually. Then there's digital printing, which allows you to print your business cards, your short run and long run business cards or quantities I should say, short and long run quantities. And also your digital printers that do posters and vinyl banners, which can be done through your um, office work supply place, your sign writers, or your copy places. They will usually have printers where they can do short run prints. So you might want one poster or a few posters. All those pull up banner stands that you see in the, in the shopping centers, they, are usually digitally printed as well. They're going to be the most common process 
of printing that you're going to go through. There are things like um, silkscreen printing, but you need a big volume run for those usually, and you're probably not going to be able to go down that path for quite some time. So keep in mind, digital printing is going to be the way you go, or dye sublimation also. Now, when it comes to using different printers, for instance, you might use one, one printer for your business cards, and you might use another printer for your fabric banners or your pull-up banner stands or your posters to make sure you get consistency in coloring with your logo you need to choose a Pantone color now this is a universal worldwide system when you go to your graphic designer you choose a Pantone color from his book and that means that when the printer goes into your artwork he sees that a specific color is a Pantone color and he is able to match the ink as close as possible to that Pantone colour. And the same when you go to another printer. He is able to match that poster as close as possible to that Pantone colour. So that saves you going to two different printers or three different printers and finding that in your logo or your business name you're using yellow and one printer will print it a light yellow one printer will print it a gold yellow, and one printer prints it a really dark yellow. By having the Pantone color in your file, which the graphic designer will do for you, that means that your colors are more likely to be consistent across all your point of sale, which means that you will look a lot more professional. You cannot choose a color or a Pantone color, even though they are aligned, but you can't choose that color on screen because your screen, your computer screen, has not been profiled. So you're better off going into your graphic designer and choosing a colour off the chart, off this booklet for you. Or you do it, or he does it, whatever the case may be, but you're, you're better off choosing the colour off, off this booklet. It will give you consistency across the board. Now, remember that when you come to your point of sale, there are different inks. So therefore, your inks that you print at home on your bubble jet are likely to be a dye-based ink. And that means that it will fade, and it will fade quite quickly outside. So if you're going to do any printing outside, uh, so if you're going to be doing any printing on your home bubble jet, the chances are it's going to be dye-based ink and it's going to fade. And that means if you're going to be creating your own cabochons for your own mosaics or any artwork, the chances are your home bubble jet is not really going to be that suitable for it. You're going to have to use a laser printer or a printer that has pigment ink in it. And some home printers do have pigment ink. It's more expensive, but some do. And that will give you a bit more longevity than using dye-based ink. I hope that clears up a few things and doesn't muddy the waters. One of the important areas in increasing sales is knowing your target audience, your clients. The other thing you need to know is the market, your target market in what you're aiming at. It is pointless selling into a market that doesn't have the money to support what you're making because your items could be too expensive for it. And on the other hand, you could sell into a market that can support more expensive pieces because they have more readily available cash. So if you're creating a piece and you know what age group that's aimed at and what type of person that's aimed at, that's going to make it extremely easy to sell to. You can also tailor make your branding to suit that audience. Many people create a piece and don't know the target market. Now that's fine if you're just creating for the enjoyment of it. But if you're wanting to create sales, you need to know the audience. And it's the same with any business, no matter what's released into the market. Any of the big companies that release anything, they know their target audience because they've done their research. It's no different in this case. There is a buyer for everything, but you need to reach that audience to achieve that sale. Now that you're armed with all that information, hopefully it was very helpful for you, you can implement any of that strategy whenever you're ready. Now bear in mind if you're wanting to create your own website or upload to any of the Facebook or Instagram pages or anything else, there's loads of videos on YouTube and also Google that will help you through that process. Some very good videos. So you're not going to be on your own. 
I know there are going to be artists out there saying, I really don't have time for this. And yes, I appreciate that and fully understand that. It does take time to do branding correctly. And I also understand that it takes time to do a piece of art as well. But even if you have a Facebook page and you're able to do branding for that, it's at least going to be a start. But anyway, I'll leave that in your hands. I hope you've all had a good time watching the videos and it hasn't been too techo for you. And I hope you've been able to take something away from them as well. So I will see you on the next one and enjoy.